if the spiritual journey is seen as climbing a mountain and attaining the goal of enlightenment is reaching the summit, then there are four main paths leading to the top of this mountain. The path of bhakti is for those who are devotional. The path of raja for those who are systematic and disciplined. The path of jhana is for those who are intellectual and enjoy studying. And the path of karma is meant for those who have many duties and responsibilities. So say the conventional interpretations of the Indian scriptures. Is it really true that there are different paths for different kinds of people? People have multifaceted personalities. They seem to have a little of everything. We all have emotions, are smart, some more, some less. We all do some kind of work and we all need a bit of discipline to live in the world. Teachers of the purely internal school of yoga say, there is only one path, but we have different phases in our lives and different aspects to our personalities. A young woman may enjoy the path of karma initially, but as she matures, she may have deep insights and longing for bhakti. She may seek out a teacher who guides her in the systematic method of meditation, Raja, that leads her to complete knowledge and wisdom, that is jhana. Or a man may enjoy studying texts until he sees the futility of intellectual learning that he calls jhana. He finds a teacher, a revered friend who guides him in a systematic way of Raja until he surrenders to the feeling of devotional bhakti and carries his joy with him into his daily life, karma in action, touching everyone that comes into his life with unconditional love. At the summit, all paths dissolve, all differences vanish, all is one. This is the state of yoga. Yoga is the end of all parts.